My oh my guys, what a dumpster fire we are having in the world of Intellivision Amico. Yesterday, I don't know if you guys caught it, I made a video giving my honest thoughts of the situation. To be honest, I don't have a dog in the fight. I'm not anti Miko. I'm not pro Amico. I really don't care. I don't understand this whole, you can either like it or hate it. There's no in the middle, like middle ground where you could just be indifferent to it, which is what I am. Honestly, initially I thought the console was sounding pretty fun. I thought it was sounding pretty cool. It was something that I was possibly interested in, but then as time happened and some kind of weird scenario or situation or controversy happened, it just slowly but surely started to kind of turn me off from the console, if I'm gonna be honest, from, from a neutral, I guess, position. There's been a lot of stuff recently that's come to light. Uh, Phil Adams, named the CEO, apparently he was involved with the Coleco Chameleon, which was one of the world's biggest scams ever. A few years back, it was a vaporware console that evidently didn't come out. <laughs> you know, it was a Super Nintendo Mini or Super Nintendo Junior console inside of a plastic shell, and it was a huge controversy. It caused a lot of issues. Uh, I believe the gentleman's name that was the head honcho of it was Mike Kennedy, and there was a lot of fallout that came out of that whole situation that still felt to this day. So when a console gets announced and it has crowdfunding, a lot of people are taking the Coleco Chameleon incident into effect, which in turn crossed over to this whole Amico, you know, stuff that's been happening. They're in their fourth round of funding. I believe the current speculation is that they're $8 million under, uh, you know, this day and age being a startup is tough during the pandemic, but that's all stuff aside. Um, honestly, the main thing that's been going on is people are accusing people of having prior knowledge of certain SEC documents and public filings and and stuff like that and it's it's kind of like a weird crosshairs between different parties where they're somebody's a pro Miko guy or an anti Miko guy and this guy's stabbing this guy in the back and this one's doing that and I really feel honestly it's kind of it's kind of crazy to watch what's going on here watching other people blame other people it's consumers blaming other consumers for the failure of what's going on for the failure of this launch for the for the delays for for the lack of information for the lack of transparency that's been out there to the common public now there's a select group of people i would call them um amico insiders I guess that's what I would refer to them. Uh, they know who they are. There's a few of them out there. I have absolutely no beef. Let me phrase this before I say this because I know people have very, um, I guess they wear their heart on their sleeve. And some of them get pretty vocal when you say one thing bad about the Amico. Let me remind you, I don't care about pro or anti-Amico either way. I'm neutral from it matter of fact if this thing doesn't get a price drop of around a hundred dollars i'm i'm not interested because i don't think it's worth it you guys can love it or you can hate it but let me just say other than a few select i guess amico insiders being involved with skype calls and podcasts and everything the company really hasn't been that transparent the company's kind of presented themselves in a way that once again, I like to use this term, comes across as Bush League, uh, whether it's Tommy Tallarico, who was a CEO of a company, get into flame wars with people on Twitter or in comment threads or forum threads and calling people gaming racist and attacking companies like Nintendo and just kind of acting in a real, um, I guess I would say, powerful manner, which is a nice way of saying... I guess, bullheaded manner towards other companies, it just kind of didn't look good. And then on top of that, doing things such as doing a fourth round of crowdfunding, which there's nothing wrong with crowdfunding, but when you're using all these like random weird websites and you're, uh, you know, a console still hasn't come out. It's been what, since 2018 that this thing was announced. A console hasn't come out. Uh, lots of the game footage really hasn't been seen. The demos look, still unfinished to this day again i'm not a video game developer by any means but finnegan fox doesn't look like it would take four years to fucking make and you could say that there's a console chip shortage okay well that's for your console what about for the development what about the software 
to program a video game, it doesn't take chips. I, I, I just don't get it. And then there's all, all sorts of other stuff that just kind of doesn't add up when you look at the gra the, the grander scheme of it. And, and I get it. This day and age, you know, in television, they're a startup company. There's a lot of uphill climbs. There's a lot of uphill battle that they have to do. But let's be honest, they haven't really been open. And, and I get it. You're going to have your crew. You're going to have your clique. You're going to have your friends that are privy to your information. Again, it's coming out that, you know, Smash JT is a backstabber because now he's vocalizing his concerns over what's going on with Phil Adams and all this. And apparently he's been privy to this information for quite some time. So people on the Amico side are saying he's a backstabber and... I don't know if you guys haven't really followed this. I guess you're one of the lucky ones, but this this has kind of just been all over my YouTube feed the last couple of days. Now I'm gonna be honest. I'm not really a friend with Smash. We used to be cordial. We used to talk. We had a little bit of a, I guess, a trouble under the bridge a couple of years ago that has long since passed. Now we're just kind of, I guess, at least on, you know, I guess cordial terms on social media i wouldn't do a barbecue with him but i have nothing against the guy but i, I don't really consider him a, a close friend i rarely ever talk to him um we don't really comment on each other's videos but it's come to light that basically it seems like everybody's placing the blame on this console and everything that goes wrong with it it's always focused on a select few people. Right now it's on Smash, but in the past it's been on Retro Bro. On the past it's been on Saggy Melons. It's been on, you know, who else? Who else? All the other GJC Game Studios. It's been on all these Amico people. Um, every time something happens, everybody places the blame on them. Like, oh, what do you think now, Retro Bro? Oh, what do you think now, Saggy? What do you think now, blah, blah, blah. And we're forgetting the bigger picture here, guys. Whether they're friends with Tommy or not, whether they're privy to information, the person responsible for any failure of the Intellivision Amico is the company itself, the employees, Tommy, John Adams, John Alvarado, or Phil Adams, whoever. I don't even know who the fuck these guys are. Like, that's how much I don't care. Phil Adams, John Alvarado, Tommy Tallarico, whatever board of directors, whatever members, any delay. Any shady decision, any choice, any kind of fucked up situation, any lack of money does not fall on somebody that's pro Amico. Like if they have a YouTube channel, if they have a podcast, whether they're representing it or whatever. And that's that's another issue that I have to say here. We'll touch on that in a minute. Any issue is not their fault. It's it's in television's fault. It's in television's fault. If something is disorganized and a mess. And I just want to emphasize that. Whether you think Smash JT betrayed you or backstabbed you because he was privy to Phil Adams and, and a phone call with SEC filings and he backstabbed all of you and this and that. At the end of the day, it's still a business making decisions and choices. And yes, you could feel that somebody is your friend. Yeah, you can feel that you're close to somebody. But at the end of the day, it's still business, which is why... It's generally called a conflict of interest if business and friendship is kind of getting in the way of honesty and, and integrity and things coming out to light and stuff. I think it's kind of sketchy that certain SEC documents and stuff were shown um, privately ahead of time before something was announced. But that falls into the whole well, you know, if somebody's an insider and they break news on their podcast, it kind of becomes like a weird Thing. And I can honestly agree with um, with Pat when Pat when he says that he didn't want to go to Intellivision Amico and stuff because he wanted to maintain his journalistic integrity. Because there's a line, there's a fine line if you want to maintain a neutral, I guess, space when it comes to being a journalist. Now, I'm not a professional journalist by any means. I never claim to break news or anything like that, but. If you're going to be an insider, you got to kind of cut off that friendship thing. If, if the only reason why you're an insider is because you're friends with somebody, that's kind of a conflict of interest in my opinion. Like you shouldn't be friends with somebody just because it's going to benefit you from an insider information because then there's technically no journalistic integrity in that. 
if you kind of want to look at it like that. But even if somebody like Smash JT was privy to Phil Adams and now he's being vocal against it, it's his prerogative uh, as a shareholder. And that's where the whole friendship to business thing just shouldn't cross over. Honestly, Smash feeling like he was backstabbed is a lot because he was treating Tommy Tellerico like he was his friend. And that's an issue. That's the issue where a lot of people had a problem with Smash JT. I know Smash is probably watching this, so I'm going to be honest right here. I'm not going to sugarcoat it. A lot of the issues that stem against you is because you were coming across as somebody that was like this, like somebody that was having barbecues with Tommy and somebody that was like his friend and blah, blah, blah. And it just rubbed a lot of people the wrong way. Let's be honest here. That's that's what it was. It rubbed a lot of people, whether they're pro or anti Miko, the wrong way. And then now that stuff's coming to light, they're gonna have an opinion that you kind of are a backstabber. But it, it's because all of you guys have this circle of trust, the circle of friendship that honestly, as a shareholder, ten thousand dollar shareholder, you shouldn't have been in a clique like that because it's business. You know, I'm, I'm not going to go and rub elbows with somebody that I'm trying to make money off of. I, I, if I want to keep my integrity as a journalist and stuff, I'm going to I'm not going to be making videos talking about how I'm all in 10,000 shares and $10,000 of shares on, on this product and, and this and that. That's honestly where the problem is, where where a lot of the heat on your back lies is because of just kind of like, I guess, the the aura that you put out there in your videos where you were talking and I'm, I'm just saying it and I'm trying to say it the nicest way possible. Cause I don't want no stupid Amico flame wars, to be honest, like tossing me in that. Cause I really don't care. You don't have to like my opinion on that smash or saggy or whoever retro bro. I have no issues with any of you guys, but again, when you mix business with friendship, that's where the problems like this are going to happen. And that's where a lot of people, that are anti Miko personally kind of think as far as like what they're seeing perception is reality. If a lot of us over here are seeing that there's like a little boys and girls click going on that, then, you know, they're kind of just speaking out for in television, like as an official PR person, whatever. But we know that your friends behind the scenes, it, it just comes out disingenuous. It comes out as, I don't want to say cult, but it comes out as a click. I'll say an Amico click. Comes out like that. I get it. Friendships, everything. Being friends with people, it means a lot. But Saggy, you had a three-hour stream where you basically admitted that you guys were privy to this information about Phil Adams weeks ago or several days ago and that Smash is just now coming out about it so what are you more upset about that smash decided to not keep it a secret anymore or are you just mad that it got exposed i i i don't understand i can see where you think maybe he betrayed you guys betrayed tommy's trust but he spent ten thousand fucking dollars on the product he has every right to question it every right to be mad and yeah you could say oh well he's questioning it now now that you know this channel called him out or whatever and yeah you you have every right to have that opinion about it you have every right to express your views your opinion and this and that just as much as he has every right to suddenly decide it's his money it's his prerogative you don't have to like it you don't have to care about it you have every right to be upset me personally there's no right way uh, you know you're upset because he spoke out and he's upset because he feels that tommy did him wrong it, nobody's wrong in this decision but I, I will say this it's not his fault that this mess is going down it's not his fault that review tech usa is calling him out it's not his fault that pat and ian have been calling out the amico for years it's not his fault that the amico got delayed it's not his fault that Phil Adams was part of the Coleco Chameleon. So why is he being to blame for everything? He's not the only investor to invest in the television Amico. He's not the only person to ever invest in a product. So again, 
I really don't consider Smash a friend, but why is all the heat on him? Is it because he's two-faced and calling you guys out? That's fair. That's a fair reason. Or did you guys just not want anybody to say anything bad about the Amico? Is, is the other thing that I'm wondering. Honestly, it's not his fault. My point is, you guys included, it's not y'all's fault. It's not Saggy's fault, Retro Bro's fault, or whatever. But the problem is, when you guys speak out so passionately, and there's nothing wrong with being passionate towards something, you guys are speaking out like it's y'all's battle, like it's, like it's your company. Like, you're so upset over people critiquing the Amico. Like it's your company, like it's your, like your money at stake. And some of you guys didn't contribute a single share. Smash paid $10,000 for shares. So how come he can't be angry, but you guys can? I, I, I don't know. I don't get it. <laughs> this is from an outside point of view looking in and it's just, it's a bit much guys. This is nobody's fault. None of you guys should be acting like it is. You guys, I get it, Retro Bro. You want to break the news. You want to get up and you want to talk about, you know, things. You want to defend your friend. But you got to remember, being a close personal friend and being a journalist and an insider and having a podcast, it, it's a conflict of interest that sometimes doesn't look good. It's not your fault, though. It's not your fault, um, but some of you guys just need to realize that the problem with the Amico is the Amico. It's not Smash. It's not Retro Bro. It's not Saggy. It's not DJC Game Studios. It's not the anti Amico people. It's in television itself. They've reached this point where they're crowdfunding again, they're switching CEOs. It's time for them to actually do something for once and they're trying they're making adjustments they're trying to make moves they're doing price hikes they're doing all they can but at the end of the day if this thing fails or it succeeds it's because of them it's not because somebody's making anti miko videos i i think one time at a convention i actually was talking to pat and i told him you know this thing's gonna fail whether people make videos about it or not and that's true or it's going to succeed whether people make videos or not. Because again, if a product's good, it's going to speak for itself. It doesn't matter if people are making anti Amico videos. Because the product still is not out, regardless if those are being made or not. And once it does come out, if it does do good, it'll shine on its own merit. I'll compare this honestly to the movie the, the game chasers movie we crowdfunded it and anything that's get that gets crowdfunded always gets met with a 50 50 there's people that don't like it and people that do like it people that supported it yeah sure they're going to like it people that don't support it they're going to be making videos about it and calling it a scam and blah 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 just like the amico right it finally had a premiere. People watched it. They enjoyed it. People that haven't gotten to see it yet are waiting for their digital copy or their physical copy. Kind of like people that played the Amico at Boomers and played the Amico at this event, the Crayola. They liked it. They played it. They supported it. They funded it. They like it. But the people that haven't gotten a chance to play it yet, they're going to have the second thoughts about it they're going to critique it they're going to think hey i'm not sure about this because they haven't experienced it yet and that's okay it's okay for people to still be hesitant about it because look at the situation honestly look at it 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 just does not look good that this thing is not out yet and that they made a change where somebody that was with the coleco chameleon is the ceo let's be real here whether you're friends or not with somebody, let's be real. The reason why the Amico is under fire is because of Amico. Come on. That's all I got to say. Thank you for watching.